Did you know that it's entirely possible to make a highway interchange using roundabouts instead of traffic lights? That's right. Check what channel this is. Take a moment. It's me, Yumble, and I've been experimenting with roundabouts instead of traffic lights on highway interchanges. Everyone, thank you for being here. I'm going to go through three or four different types of roundabout interchange today, kind of modify them as I go, see what works well, what doesn't work. Uh, this was a really fun experiment overall, and I'm really glad to share this with you. Everyone, thanks for being here. Enjoy the video. The first stop on our roundabout interchange journey is actually a twofer. This is a dog bell. No, wait. This is a dog bone and a dumbbell interchange all in one. They're technically two different things, but they look very similar. So take the shape of a diamond interchange, which is what these ramps actually look like, the diamond interchange, which is popular in many places. And then if you convert those intersections into roundabouts, you get what's called a dumbbell interchange. This side represents a dumbbell interchange because traffic is allowed to make a complete circle in the intersection. The dog bone fixes this and increases capacity in my, in my understanding by disallowing the full circle at this point. So what you get if you do this on both sides is basically one big roundabout that's kind of squished in the middle to save space and probably money by consolidating the overpass or underpass or whatever the case may be. Uh, so I'm probably going to convert this whole thing into a dumbbell in just a moment. Uh, you'll also notice that, excuse me, I'm going to convert it to a dog bone, which has slightly higher capacity due to traffic not crossing over here and here. The U-turn decreases capacity like automatically, so I'm going to do both sides like this so it has a better chance at working. I've also taken the liberty of using a three-lane road to respect the, the lane math. The incoming traffic and outgoing traffic is going to be on six lanes, so I wanted to have three lanes in, which gives the right turn onto the highway a free a free lane on both sides. Let me convert both sides to this uh, to this dog bone style, and we'll see how it handles traffic. Here it is with some traffic. I've let this run for five to ten minutes at three speed, just to see if it can reach an equilibrium. It it's reached a sort of equilibrium, though it is backed up on all sides. The highway backups are especially alarming. Uh, so I would say that this is solidly a medium traffic solution. If you have kind of medium or low traffic, maybe you have a really good transit system in your city, maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe th there's just less cars on the road for one reason or, an or another. This would be a very strong option. I would like to improve it by ignoring realism a little bit. I've, you can see largely I've kept to two lane roads in the roundabout on both sides. I want to see if I can, once again, barring realism, if I can kind of soup this up a little bit to make it run a whole lot better and also i want to try to get two lanes of traffic to cross because there is a lot of crossing traffic on this if i could get two lanes of traffic to cross consistently that would that would really go a long way i think uh, let me change out some roads and use some traffic manager and see if i can fix this thing up a bit okay after substantial tinkering and lots of changes and as said before disregarding realism uh, i'd call this pretty well managed I've got three lanes going into a four lane roundabout for half of it. And then the other half is three lane. And I figured since I did that, why not make this a six lane overpass? I think that's a, a fair, you know, that's a fair way to do it. The only problem is the highways have cleaned up and this direction is cleaned up. I have yet to see this direction clear properly. I'm not exactly sure why that is but I think I've got as much lane usage as I can. But yeah, feel free to download the same roads that I've been using from the workshop. These are uh, roundabout roads and vanilla plus roads, regular highway, uh, regular six lane overpass. I'd love to see your creations. Feel free to join the discord. Um, if you can fix the, <laughs> if you can fix the dog bone, I'm, I'm all ears, but that is about as close as I've got it. And I think I'm happy with that for today. Moving on. Featured here is another fan favorite, another interchange with a roundabout in the middle. This is the quintessential bypass roundabout, I would have to call it. Currently, we've got a six lane road entering and exiting on either side for the arterial. Um, so it's acting as a service interchange for getting cars on and off the highway. I've got three lanes in the center with the middle lane being a shared 
exit and straight lane, uh, just to try to get a little more capacity. As you might imagine, similarly to the dog bone, it's backing up on all sides. Uh, so I'm going to take a, a few minutes here and try to soup this up, barring realism. Uh, this is another, I would say, identical to the dog bone in a lot of ways. It's a medium, low to medium capacity interchange. It can be a good option if you're trying to save space or save money, things like that. But I think it can do a lot better if I kind of ignore the logic of realism. Give me a couple minutes to, uh, to put this together and we'll see if, if it works any better. So after about a half hour of tinkering, I've uh, increased incoming highway lanes to three entering the roundabout. The roundabout itself is four lanes, then goes down to three lanes in between the highways for lane math reasons. It is highly imperfect, probably in setup, but mainly it's imperfect in performance. It's uh, The tailbacks are not noticeably shorter. I, I even cleared traffic in between to see if the pathing would reset, but no, we are still up against what seems to be an insurmountable amount of traffic. What I would like to do is take this single bypass roundabout interchange, which is, it's valid in its own right. This will work in a lower density situation, no problem. Uh, but what I'm gonna do for this situation is convert it into a bit more of a system interchange. Right now it's in its service interchange variant. If I convert this road, this arterial into a highway and give it an underpass, I think I can make it work. Let's let's uh, let's check out the double bypass roundabout. Now we're talking. That's pretty good. It is kind of beautiful. I'm I'm into it. This is the full system interchange variant of the bypass roundabout. So we've got two sets of roads bypassing the roundabout. So the circle itself is only for left turns right now. Because of the nature of this map, I'm using interchange test map for all of this, uh, for all of the proceedings here, traffic often wants to go straight across, which may also be the case in your city. So bypasses are extremely powerful. Feel free to also check out my video about the vanilla overpass and uh, the cursed video as well. Those both feature bypass type solutions, but this is definitely a, a large, somewhat monstrous thing but it's got everything you could ask for, all the bells and whistles, and only a two-lane roundabout as well. I've chosen to take the slip lane out of the roundabout. In previous examples, I, I imagine there's gonna be some comments that say, oh, there's no slip lane there, and there generally was, except in some examples, but I chose to put the slip lane in the roundabout. On this one, the slip lane is occurring, as you'd expect, separate from the roundabout network, so that's not a bad option. And of course, having all the, the major sources of traffic going over and under all of the conflict points is massively helpful. Pros are that it works great. It's clearing this massive amount of traffic with ease. On the downside, it takes up a bunch of space and it's quite expensive. It's also three levels high. So you've got the, the ground network You've got the middle level, which includes two bridges now that weren't there before. And then you've got a third, very lengthy bridge. Elevated sections are rather expensive in real life. Uh, you'll also notice I didn't go for a tunnel. Tunnels are more expensive in real life, but also I don't like how tunnels look in game. They tend to just hide what's going on. And I just want to be able to view the whole thing all at once. But yeah, two thumbs way up. This is a high capacity junction as expected. Uh, use it to connect two highways use it to maybe connect traffic to your city as an entrance and exit, maybe, but I would generally reserve this for uh, connecting highways to one another. I'm gonna show you one other roundabout interchange variant that I think is gonna prove to be the sweet spot between all of these, all of these dif uh, different junctions. Let me set up this one for you. Give me just a moment. Hey, me again, real quick. Uh, I reduced it down to one lane in the circle, and it's still working great for this traffic volume. So just something to note, you may not even need the two lane circle in the middle. Okay, that's all. Here is my personal favorite amongst all the interchanges shown today. This is a, I suppose it's kind of a dog bone parklow, which is kind of silly. I'd call it a roundabout parklow probably. 
but parklo is short for partial clover leaf. You'll notice this this looks a lot like the dog bone interchange from earlier, right? The dog bone and the dumbbell. Except exiting traffic from the highway has this loop. If we follow the hot dog truck, hot dog truck goes around the loop and they get to skip the traffic that is trying to go straight across. That's really the benefit is the straight through traffic. Um, the order has been changed. The order of entry into the roundabout has been changed to reduce conflict. I would say that this is slightly more expensive and space consuming than the dumbbell or the, what's the other one? The, the dumbbell and the dog bone. I'd say that it's a little more space consuming, but efficiency wise, it's incredible. This is moving a similar amount of traffic to the bypass roundabout, I'd say. The double bypass, the big one. And it only has one overpass. A single overpass, no tunnels required. Uh, the overpass is of a fairly regular length, so it's not even that crazy if you look at it. Uh, Right-turning traffic gets a slip lane. They get to go right into the roundabout to go right and get out. Left-turning traffic goes around the loop to turn left. Through traffic has two lanes. I've got it worked out in such a way that lanes are shared so that two lanes of traffic get to cross this thing, which somehow happened easier than with the dumbbell or with the dog bone, either or. Um, some of them aren't yielding there. I'm not sure what that is, but that'll that'll sort out in a second. But yeah, you can see no, no backup in sight. It's the same traffic, same map, same everything. Uh, single overpass, just beautiful. I, I love a partial clover leaf, whether it's lighted on the ends or roundabouts. Um, I imagine the lighted option has slightly higher capacity overall, but that's okay. Uh, for circles in interchanges, my money is on the roundabout partial clover leaf. Everyone, thank you so much for hanging out. This one was a blast to make. I like integrating roundabouts into certain situations and seeing how they perform, of course. Uh, this has been enlightening for me. I didn't necessarily know that the partial clover leaf variant would perform as well as the triple by as the the double bypass roundabout but it seems to be doing great at least for this volume of traffic uh, definitely subscribe here if you'd like i do tutorials every week and and builds and interchanges and intersections and all kinds of city skyline stuff we also have a discord community uh, feel free to join up there we're always talking city skylines and intersections and whatnot i also stream on twitch twice a week Everyone, thank you so much for hanging out. I've been Yumble. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.